Hey guys, it's Angela again. So I wanted to do another video. <laughs> um, and I wanted to do a little story time video with you guys. So I got my phone open for this. Um, I've been, I try not to go onto social media. I try not to go onto Facebook. I do like Instagram, but I try to limit myself to an hour a day. Oh, I can't because it like, I am a medium. I've um, been this way since birth um, and I'm extremely, extremely empathic and um, everything affects me. Super sensitive. When I was little, I would cry at the drop of a hat. Don't tell me kids were starving. I would just lose my mind and just start bawling like, oh my God, you know? Um, so I thought I'd do a little story time for you guys. Um, and the story time is, um, <laughs> we're going to add to this like whole mix of shit that has happened to me. Right. But I figured somebody could really benefit from this because, um, a lot of the things that have happened, I've, I've been able to take the psychoticness of it, of the craziness and kind of turn that energy and make it into something that has been, um, I guess, somewhat useful <laughs> so that I can continue on in this life instead of completely losing my marbles, right? So story time, basically, um, about 10 years ago, I was hit by a truck. Um, it wasn't like a tractor trailer truck. It wasn't the size of an SUV, it was bigger. It was like, you know, those really old Dodge, like the OJ, it was like the OJ, OJ truck. It was a little bigger than that. Um, but yeah, I was crossing the street. I was in uh, New York. It's <clears throat> from my residences. I was in New York and um, I was almost on the sidewalk and the woman that was, um, that was driving, she was making a left, she was making a left, and I had, I was like almost right there. And so I didn't even really see her coming. And so I'm walking and I'm, I'm almost, and I heard a voice say, don't go, stop. And I just paused for a moment. And I was like, what am I doing? And so I just went, I was like, I can make it. And I had the light. And right before I put my foot onto the sidewalk, she made the turn, she was rushing. And I turned to my left, I turned to my left, I'm like, which way was it? And I remember seeing her coming and looking into her dashboard from the outside and thinking, she doesn't see me. And then I felt her bumper on my left thigh. And after that, like my body just shut down because the trauma would have been, I think, a little too severe. And that's the thing that people don't understand is that when your body's about to go through a trauma, it has this defense mechanism to protect itself where it will just shut down, like blackout, <laughs> completely blackout, okay? So I heard that, and what must have happened, they tell me, is that I felt her bumper, she hit me, I just kind of spun and experienced some sort of whiplash and then I went straight down. It looks left but it was right. Um, I just went straight down and boom, slammed my head on the concrete. So they thought that I had broken my skull, which I did not. <laughs> and during that time a lot of celebrities were like going skiing or having like these minor falls and um, having some type of uh, skull or brain issues. I went straight down, boom. I had orbital wall and floor fractures. Um, I had spasms all over my body, but I did not break my skull, right jaw drop. So I really feel like the, po the point of me in wanting to make this video um, is because I, I've been witnessing and hearing and seeing a lot of people talk about anxiety, having anxiety, having post-traumatic stress, um, 
and just really feeling the intensity, not only of other people's energy, but the energy of the world. And it's because we're so tuned in all the time. We're so tuned in on social media. If you follow any news feeds, it could be like the sweetest things that you want to see. But if you follow any news feeds and a lot of your friends follow news feeds, you're fucked. <laughs> because then they want to share. They get angry and they say, do you see this? I'm sharing this. Everybody share. Everybody share. And they'll throw it in, into your DMs, you know. And you're already mentally fragile because you've gone through a lot of things in your life, you know. You, you've gone through a lot of hardships, maybe relationships. I remember after I got hit by the truck and I was recovering, I couldn't cross the street by myself. For a year, I would just break down and scream right at the corner. I couldn't go anywhere. Um, I got into this really toxic relationship that was physically and emotionally and mentally abusive. It was crazy um, because I was trying to, I was trying to get myself together mentally. The thing that makes that experience so traumatic, I've had out of body experiences. Um, while my body was still alive, um, while I was sleeping, I've come out of this thing <laughs> and that was traumatic as a child. It was like, I would just come out of it very naturally. But when I got hit by the truck, I remember laying on the ground and I couldn't get, I couldn't, my head was spinning so much. I couldn't get my head together. And I remember, I'm coming back. I remember, um, I remember praying and praying, God, if you're real, God, if you're real, Jesus, if you're real, yes, you are. Are you real? You know, like I'm just praying and praying. If you're real, get me out of here. If you're real, get me out of here. If you're real, get. And I remember feeling so empty, like, is God real? Is God real? Because I'm laying here and I don't know if I'm dying. I feel like I'm dying. I feel like I'm dying and. And then I remember I was just out. I was fully out of this thing. I had no connection to my body whatsoever. I remember being on a different sidewalk and I was going to look back. I remember myself as a spirit. I was going to look back and I heard a voice say, don't look back. Just keep going. So I had, um, I had two of my godsons at the house with me during that time. I was going to the library to study for the LSAT, <laughs> which of course didn't happen. Um, and I was going to the library to study for the LSAT and, you know, I left them there asleep, you know? <clears throat> so I went to, I, I, I went to go check on them and I was very, everything was very clear for me. I was very, I understood like, okay, I can, I can move, I can go see them. And then I said, wait a minute, why am I, why am I walking? I can just fly. So I remember just coasting, you know? And then I got to a point where I was like, I don't even need to do this. Everything in this realm is the speed of thought, speed of thought, boom. You think it is there, like boom, you know? And so I was, I just saw their faces and boom, I was right there. Um, I was with them for a while. And then after a while, I have no time, I have no clue how much time passed because time does not exist in that place, in that realm. So I have no clue how much time passed, but I remember at a certain point thinking, I, I'm in this in this in between place. I haven't seen any other spirits. I haven't seen any family members. It's just been me. I can't go in certain places because there's this invisible, um, like plexiglass almost, where I can't go here and I can't go there. I can only go certain places. And I remember thinking, my body must still be alive, and I got to get back to my body, you know, which I did. Um, I remember waking up in the ambulance once I got back to my body, and I remember the EMT saying, Miss Montanez, do you know where you are? And I was like, why are you yelling? And she's like, you got hit by a car. And I said, are you shitting me? And I said, what happened? And she said, we don't know. We got to make sure that, <clears throat> we got to make sure that um, nothing is broken. And at the time, I had gotten this fabulous new pea coat, like that morning, that morning, and I put it on so I can go and study. And it was fat. No, it was December. It was three days, it was two or three days before the new year of uh, 2009. <clears throat> so my new year sucked, <laughs> and I 
And um, so she said, we got to make sure nothing is broken. I said, okay. So I started unbuttoning my coat. She's like, no, no, no. We got to cut it. And I thought, please. And I said, please, please don't cut my new coat. <laughs> I just got this coat. And they're looking at each other like, is she serious? She just got hit by a car. She has head trauma. I was like, don't cut the coat. My, I, I have, I'm not, nothing is broken, you know? Whew, everything inside me is still like, when I go back to that place, I still have trauma because I feel it right here. Um, yeah, so when I'm not at a place fitness-wise, um, my body doesn't feel strong, I go through medical issues, I stress myself out, I'm in this place um, where I'm on social media a lot, the trauma will resurface in the body um, and resurface in the mind. Sometimes the mind and the body will appear completely disconnected from one another and you just cannot line yourself up, you know? Um, I was looking, so I understand completely, but I've been seeing a lot of people talk about anxiety and some people can't go out and some people don't even want to go shopping and some people don't want to be around a lot of people and a lot of people, I, you know, people share things on social media and it's like, they're like, you know, this person committed suicide and that person committed suicide and it's real, you know, like it's real to the point where you cannot dress up pain. You cannot dress up trauma with a ton of makeup and new clothes and a bigger closet and a bigger house. Like, it's not going to happen because when the trauma is so deep and you are absorbing every single thing that is happening in this world on your news feeds. I mean, a long time ago, you only saw it on the news or if it was happening in your neighborhood or if you heard about it. But, you know, at this point you can just get a notification or somebody, you know, shares it in your inbox and you, you didn't ask for it. So right away you see it and boom, you start to feel it and you get angry and everybody's angry. And then everybody wants to talk about what they're angry about, you know, and very few people do anything. And now you see there's more rallies and there's, there's this whole new uh, culture of this brewing and boiling of anger that has been uh, happening for a very long time. So it's creating its own version of trauma, its own version of post-trauma and current trauma and anxiety that is happening within people, which is not very normal, you know? Definition of post-traumatic stress disorder, a disorder in which a person has difficulty recovering after experiencing or witnessing a terrifying event. And honestly, that could be many things in this day and age. That could, that could literally be a presidential election because you're so scared about what is going to happen. I know as, you know, a black woman, as a black Latin woman, you know, the wrong person in office, you know, it, it makes you nervous because you think, oh my God, now people can, certain people think they have a past to treat people any way they want to. So you're nervous. That is a traumatic thing that can happen. It's an anxiety that can turn into a trauma or it'll go right into a trauma depending upon how much you absorb of the energy of the information around you, the dialogue you're having with other people. Um, how much time are you taking for yourself in silence? What kind of music are you listening to? You know, um, I read this quote on Instagram um, <clears throat> that spoke. It was a quote from these rabbis that basically said, you know, show me um, the type of music that someone listens to and, I sh and I'll tell you what their soul is yearning for or what their soul is reaching for. You know, I don't even know who's out right now. I couldn't tell you. I like Halsey, <laughs> but I have no clue. I don't know what's on TV. I don't know what's out. I don't follow the Kardashians. Um, no, no hate, no shade, straight up. I just can't do it. You know, I don't watch Love and Hip Hop. I mean, my life is very, very simple. <clears throat> and even then, there are certain things that are not simple. And I try to surround myself 
with love, with loving people, because that diminishes the amount of anxiety. You know, it's a very real thing because after a certain amount of time of having and being surrounded by anxiety and post-trauma, your spirit, your soul will make a decision about whether to stay in this uh, earthly plane or whether to depart. Now, honestly, I don't intend on coming back. <laughs> Once my time is up, I ain't coming back to this place. So I need to fight my way and, and, and live the best life that I can and, um, you know, and help as many people as I can because it can be very challenging on this earth, you know. But the more anxiety, the, the, more, the more energy, the more people, the more conversations you have that are not beneficial to your soul, the more things that you see on your news feed, the more time you spend on social media, it's breeding this anger. It's breeding this frustration. It's been every, your conversations, the people you surround yourself with, what are you talking about? Because that is building your internal world, you know? Um, and that contributes to what happens with your health. People only think that it's just what you eat. And that is not so. There's, there's levels and there are a certain amount of things that actually come together to create this beautiful inner world that is the body. And the body takes a lot. The body can take a lot of beating. The body can take, the mind can take a lot. But at a certain point, you have, to, you have to be gentle. You have to care for it. You have to care for your real self. People that feel completely disattached or they feel like they have, let me bring up this light, there we go. Or they feel like they have two different worlds or two different people and they look at, um, they look at their friends or they look at their family and they say, these people don't know me. I don't even know me. I know I like this, but I feel like I'm meant to be here. Or I'm meant to do that. <laughs> your soul and what's around you at this point are in two completely different places and your soul is trying to lead you and you're still holding on. You know? So it's the anxiety, it's the trauma. This is the story time that I'm giving you. And as we roll into 2020, it's such a great time to just let everything go. And it doesn't mean let it go like give everybody the finger, fuck you, fuck you, you know? Like, no, like you can really just let things go in a very loving way. I've had to do that. I've had to say goodbye to people. I've had to say, if this is how you feel, you know, I've noticed X, Y, Z. You know what? This is not a healthy situation. I wish you the best. And I truly do. And it does not mean that I'm being like, shade bitch queen. It just means I need to move forward with my life. I need to be surrounded by loving people. I need to be surrounded by, by people that hug you, that hug me every day, that, you know, I, there's kids at my, I'm in my sister's home, there's kids, you know, kids are full of love, you know, they laugh, they love, everything is in the moment, when they love you, they love you, and they're just holding you, and as we grow into teenagers, young adults, adults, we're only reserving this love for people that we're either in relationships with our really, really close friends, you know, or they're dying. Why do we have to wait till people are dying to show them love to say, Hey, I love you. Hey, let me give you a hug. Hey, are you okay? Is everything all right? People need to feel love every single day. And I truly, truly feel like that's why there's so much, like it's insanity, you know, greed and, and just all this negativity and you took my man and this bitch and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, where are you not feeling love that all of this shit is important to you? Where are you not loving yourself or finding somebody that can love you properly instead of running after all of these shitheads, you know? Now, honestly, it can be lonely being single, but it's better than the stress, you know? And the love, the love is, is necessary. It's a necessary thing. It's, it's, it's how we are as human beings, you know? So... If you suffer from anxiety, let me tell you, therapy, therapy is great, okay? I've had a therapist, especially after all the medical issues, therapy is amazing. Um, you find the right therapist, there's nothing wrong with telling a therapist it's not working out for me. I've had to do that, you know? 
So therapy is amazing. Somebody who can also talk back to you. Somebody who feels loving for you. Um, I am not a therapist. <laughs> I am a medium. Um, I'm an energy worker as well. And um, yeah, so I do some health coaching. Straight up, I'm not a therapist. <laughs> I can give you some really good advice, especially from the spiritual world, but she's going through her own shit. <laughs> you know, I can tell you what I'm told, but she's going through her own shit, you know? So therapy is amazing. It's, it's an awesome thing. And, um, I really encourage it. If you are going through post-trauma, be gentle with yourself. It's a day by day process. You are now learning to face your fears. It's not an easy process because now all your fears are coming up to the surface in different ways and you are learning to face those fears. So my soul is with you. I'm solidarity totally because I'm on that path right now um, and I'm totally willing to listen. <laughs> um, and if you feel like if your soul feels like you no longer want to be on this planet and you've admitted that to yourself, like, I'm done. I don't want to be here, but I don't want to harm myself or I don't. Real talk, all this realness. In the hospital last year, it was so bad that I gave up. And I didn't tell anybody. I completely gave up. Like, I was like, if I'm going to die, it's going to be my way. And I'm just done with this place. And I was already in a bad place, emotionally and mentally. Um, and I felt unloved. I felt very much unloved by some of the people around me and their actions. And I just said, this is not what I came for. This is not what I came to this planet for. And so it almost happened, you know. And I had to pull my whole self together and say, no. There is another life for me where people love me, where people will show love. For me and where I can where I will be healthier and where I will get through this and where I can help and inspire other people so that they can move forward and help and inspire other people because you can and that's why you are here you will help and inspire other people it's just a rough time right now and you're facing all of these fears and you're going through all of these things and you will come out of it I Guarantee you will come out of it, but you do need help and you do need love and you do need assistance, you know, and that's okay. So and that's okay. Accept where you are right now and this is what I am. Speak your truth, be your truth, and be who you are. So that is the story time for today. Um, I hope this was helpful for somebody. If you want to hear more videos like this or let me know what you want me to dive into um because i have had a lot of crazy <laughs> i've had a lot of crazy spiritual experiences i have a lot of interesting experiences with health i've been like my own guinea pig my entire life and um ultimately i just really want to help people um you know sometimes i don't think you really have to charge an extreme amount of money to do that. I've been blessed by people. Some people have charged me a little bit. Some people have charged me nothing. And that that beauty has made me feel like I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move forward and I'm gonna do that for us. So I gotta go. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.